My life is a miracle. My birth was a miracle and my very existence today is a miracle. Um, my mother had complications while pregnant with me. I'm the last child actually, so she obviously thought it was going to be easy because she has gone through it already. But then there were so many complications in my pregnancy that she was advised to terminate the pregnancy. She had malaria in pregnancy, malaria plus plus. She had bleeding, intense bleeding, hypotension, and that was affecting her health. Doctors continually told her it was okay to let go to this child because you already have four kids at home. I don't know what made her not to take that advice. I see grace in that. I see God. And that that didn't end there though. She went home one day and she bled. We all know when somebody bleeds, especially people that are medically um, educated in that area, they know when somebody bleeds and they're pregnant, that's an abortion. No, God did not see it fit for me to go that day. So he preserved my life. But then the devil didn't end there. On the day of delivery, my mother was in a complication and she was taken to the university teaching hospital by then. Um, they told her it was gonna be a 50-50 between her and, and me and they told her to choose. Until now, I do not know who she chose, but I see God in this because we both survived that day. I cannot imagine how terrifying it was for her, thinking of her four children that she left at home, but then she still held on to this little girl. I see God in this. When I think about such things, I value my life. I don't leave it carelessly. I, I value it because God preserved me for a reason. He preserved me for a purpose. I, I live life carefully knowing that for him to preserve me, there's certainly something that he wants me to achieve. And so every single day I lived a Christian life as per se. Yeah, because I was brought up in a Christian home. <clears throat> but then... Two years ago, I noticed that I experienced some kind of discomfort. I couldn't sit for a long time. I couldn't talk for a long time. I, I was having issues and I was asking myself, why? Why, why am I having these issues? So I went, I went over to my mom and we decided to go and have an MRI done. Well, I was diagnosed with a condition called scoliosis and they told me I needed surgery worth 70,000. Where was I gonna get that 70,000? My family was drained. They were so worried. They were always calling me because I was in Squint Cafe. They were always calling me, how are you feeling? But then I was not discouraged. I decided to look back. I'm like, no, there's a God who preserved my life, even when it was clear for me to die. This scoliosis was not going to bring me down. So I told a few of my friends who are fellow ministers and we started praying. And I asked them, I told them, let's not ask for my healing. Let's not ask for my healing. Let's just praise God. Let's just worship him. There is power in praise and worship, let me tell you. I went for my final consultation with um, some doctors that had come in from the UK. And they told me, no, we're gonna go ahead with the surgery. I said, no. I said, God, you take over. I remember looking at my mom and she was so terrified. And, and these doctors that were around, the Zambian doctors were so excited because they were looking at this bent spine, but I'm, a, I'm able to walk. And they were so excited. For me, I saw God and I said, take over. I, I, I can't do this alone. I can't heal myself. I can't I can handle it. 
just take over. So he did. And gradually, when we went home, the pain started reducing. I was like, okay, this is good. The pain started reducing and day after day, I kept thanking him for the gradual improvement. And here I am today, I'm able to speak for a long time. I'm able to stand for a long time. I'm even able to wear heels the whole day and just feel comfortable in them. I see God in it and I'll forever be grateful. And that is why every single day I was writing testimony because I waited seven years to release it. For me, that was building. It was testimony after testimony. It was an impact after an impact. And when I finally released it and it did not just speak to me and the people close to me, but it went viral to speak to people that I did not even tell my story to. But the fact that they related to testimony encouraged me and it is still encouraging me because I, I hear people talking about how it reminds them of where God has taken them from. I hear people talking about how it has strengthened them. Testimony is my everything and it is my life story. And how amazing it is to feel when your testimony can help somebody testify and, and continue to give glory to the Lord. Um, this God is amazing. I can, I can stand here and say, there is God. And if there's somebody out there saying there isn't God, then check your priorities because just the very existence of me sitting here is evidence that there's a God somewhere. And this is my testimony. I am Pelile Msoni and that is my story.